Hello everybody. Hope you're well. Sorry I'm a bit <laughs> later than I should be. Hopefully I'm in the right place at the right time with the right people. <laughs> Goodness only knows. Uh, yeah, sorry about the delay there. I got a little bit tied up. I thought I got all my technology sorted out and uh, it didn't want to play. So I do, I do apologise. Let me just uh, refresh my, my phone here and I can make sure that I'm live. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I got the sound okay as well. Good. Okay, let's not let's not talk about technology for goodness sake. We'll be here all day. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's lovely to have your company. I'm so look look for looking forward to uh, being with you all. Uh, just spending um, what twelve nights? <laughs> now listen, you don't have to stay <laughs> for twelve nights. You can dip in and out as and when you like, and I'll keep reminding you all about that. Um, you know, well, every night, basically. Um, the live will always be here in on the page here. So um, it's called Part 1, 12 Days of Christmas Part 1. So if you ever need to find it, that's what you're looking for. I can't remember if I've got a search facility on, on a page. I, can't, I actually can't remember. But... Um, Anyway, they're all they're all going to be um, stored away in media. So if you look there, you'll always find them and I will upload them to YouTube. Um, unfortunately, uh, I wanted to do YouTube live, but I can't. So uh, I have to leave it leave it like this. I'll have another play tomorrow and see if I can resolve that one. Um, but yes, yeah, so welcome. Um, now then, I hope you've all um, got your um, patterns ready. Um, it's now uh, it's now. Um, um, I flipped them <laughs> because I before I hadn't flipped them did a great job of drawing them very happy about that <laughs> and I thought yes we've, we've done it before Christmas hurrah and then this morning I woke up and I thought hmm I didn't flip them <laughs> so we had to redo it again but I did let you all know so hopefully you've uh, downloaded them again and it's only the one page where the pattern pieces are that's all the applique pieces so it's not too bad and in actual fact you can draw on the glue side of the bond web peat and bond whatever you use um, and it should be fine so um Oh, but I have printed them out properly this time. So, uh, welcome one and all. I'm just going to have a quick look and see who's uh, who's joining us. We've got lots of people joining us already. We've got Gemma and Dawn. Hi, Dawn and Kath. Uh, we've got Mandy. We've got Abigail. Hello, Abigail. Debbie, Laura, Judy. We've got Judith and Anne as well. We've got uh, Sandra and Jeanette. Uh, gosh, I can't say all the names, <laughs> Sarah and Inga, uh, Christine, I'm going to skip a few, I'm so sorry, we've got um, Jackie, Jackie Thomas, um, I've got Cindy on here as well, uh, we've got Michelle, lots of people watching which is lovely and lots of people commenting which is great. Um, if you see anything untoward I will do my very very best to, to delete, you know what um, some people are like. Uh, so we will keep an eye on that if I can, um, see how we get on um, and uh, as I say I will, I will try to delete them if they cause problems because you know this this is what we have to put up with guys <laughs> so we'll wait and see anyway um happy 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 christmas because we're still in christmas aren't we i'm just looking through all the names here um anita and uh alegria and jean lots of people watching lots of people going to be participating hopefully hello nicola um and uh, sally as well so yeah so happy boxing day i hope you've had a great day yesterday I hope that you managed to get five minutes, uh, at least sit down and watch a film. I must admit the films are not desperately good, I don't think, unless you want to watch something from the 1920s, 1930s, um, and then they're great. <laughs> so, and uh, I must admit, I did switch on The Sound of Music right at the end, and I quite enjoyed that last 10 minutes. It was really lovely. Um, yeah, so, uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep my comments going. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's that been fun to try and work out what we're going to watch next, if, if we're going to watch TV. We've been out for walks. I expect you've done the same and uh, had, you know, joy good time and visiting people and all that sort of thing. So um, you'll have to let me know how, how your Christmas went. Um, obviously, we're still kind of on the edge of it, aren't we? <laughs> 
and and theoretically 12 days of Christmas I think it ends the 6th of January so we're going to be uh, right in there as as always it's planned to perfection <laughs> maybe not <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hoping that you... Oh, Jean's watching from Spain. How wonderful. I expect it's still nice and warm in Spain, Jean, if you can keep out of any sort of breezes and things like that. Um, so I hope you've had a good day. I hope you've had a, had a nice rest and uh, you're, you've put your feet up and you've had a nice glass of something nice. Judith says, The Sound of Music was the first film my husband took me to. Oh, that's lovely. I think the first film I was taken to was Bambi. Yeah, definitely was Bambi. And then some neighbours took me to see um, um, Mary Poppins. That, I think that was later, wasn't it? I have no idea of, t of times, years and things like that. But I didn't go very often because it was in the town and we, didn't, we never went in the town. <laughs> we lived in a little tiny village about sort of, I don't know, 15 miles out. So we didn't get the chance to go to the cinema very often. Daryl said she had a very quiet day yesterday and today. Back to normal tomorrow. That's good. Um, we, you know, sometimes we like normal. Normal is actually quite good. I, I'm, I'm OK with normal. Um, it, you've, got, you've, got, you've got this lucky benchmark, isn't it? <laughs> So uh, lovely to see you all and um, we're going to start now and, uh, and now I've done the preliminaries and we've uh, everybody's joined that wants to join and then we can start uh, looking at the actual design and what we're going to do. If I can make this silly phone work with the comments I'll be fine. Oh who said about Bambi? Oh Cindy says Bambi was the first film my dad took us to. Oh that's nice. Yeah I don't know what year it was. No don't say because that will absolutely date us won't it so it's best not to say. Um, <laughs> right hopefully as I say um, now the downloads are on the website and um, uh, there's been loads of posts about about the um uh where to go so but if you just go to my website lizzycurtis.com there's a tab that says 12 days of christmas if you're on your mobile 1804 thank you happy um <laughs> dismissed um <laughs> That's pushed, put me off my stride. If you're on your mobile, the menu is the the bars, the three three or four little bars that are up the top of the page, um, and you just if you click on that, you'll get the menu up, and you've got a banner that says 12 Days of Christmas. If you're on a, something a bit bigger, like a laptop or I think even an iPad. Um, the um, the tabs going across the the top of the website um, will and you'll see from Twelve Days of Christmas. I've cl I've cleaned it up a bit so it's uh, quite obvious um, where that is. So if you click on that, the three patterns are there. Oh, lovely, Kath has put the link on there. Thank you, Kath. Um, and please go ahead and and download them. They're very simple, um, but hopefully when once we start making it, it'll all start to look stunningly beautiful. You can make it with me. I'm going to do right from scratch. I've cut some pieces out ready of bits of fabric. Um, and I really haven't done much more than that. I wanted to do it with you. So we'll have an hour tonight and then we'll have an hour every night now for the next 12 nights, pop, popping it all together. And I'm going to talk you through now, um, if I can get you on the overhead here. I'm going to talk you through how we're going to approach it. So I've got the blue copy here. I'm actually going to make mine in yellow. And the first section we're going to make is these, these two bits here. So these bits here. Okay. And this is going to be day one and two. Day one and two. Okay. Sorry. Bad, bad writing. I've got greasy hands. I put cream on my hands just before I came um, to wear and uh, they are far too greasy for fabric but there we are mistake made um, so this is going to be day one and two so we're going to try and do as much of this um, uh, in the next two days so tonight and tomorrow night we'll be concentrating on this section here okay now then I've already made lots of notes and lots of bits of scribbling on this one so if you wanted to write this on your copy, maybe, of the, the quilts, the, the wall hanging, whatever you might want it to be. I mean, it's, it's 30 by 40, but you could sort of double this up. You could have it 60 by 80, or oh, that's perhaps a bit big, but 
maybe 60 by 80 or you can work out maybe have certain blocks right at the bottom maybe if it's going to be on the, on a bed or something like that so obviously you can make it bigger if you want to um, so uh, the first square you're going to cut is the background fabric so you've got in in my notes um, to you about what you need it said about backing fabric and background fabric and the backing fabric is what you're going to put on the back of the quilt. The background fabric is this, the white for me. It can be anything for you, but it's the white on here. And um, it, you need to cut that square 10 and a half by 10 and a half inches, okay? And you can see what I've done about colouring in with lines. So I can see my different sections. I can see um, quite clearly those sections. So you might want to do that. And then you want another piece of background fabric, which is ten and a half by five and a half. OK, so that's our first two pieces. And I suggest you only cut those. I would just, you know, sort of do it with me if you like. You don't have to, but it's, you know, it saves you trying to cut everything and getting behind and getting fed up and all that sort of thing. So you could just cut those two pieces. Um, and then you've got day one and day two sorted, okay? So let's just have another quick look at the comments again so I know that we're all we're all settled, we're all okay. Um, there's lots of people watching, which is great. Please say hello, that would be lovely, be really, really nice. Oh, Sarah says, lots of family for three days as I head home in the morning. Oh, how lovely, Sarah, how super. 1804, what a cheek. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so your first background square is ten and a half by ten and a half, and then we're going to incorporate this this little section here, and that's ten and a half by five and a half. Okay, don't worry about anything else. If you want to take a screenshot of this, please do. Um, come back to the video in you know today, tomorrow, next week, um, and then you can um, you know write down what I've got here. I thought it would be easier to do that. Um, and then we're going to sort of we'll build it all up together. So if I bring my fabrics in, I'll just pop this um, over here. I'll just move my phone and move this out of the way. Um, and I'll show you my fabrics first. Now, obviously, you, you, you've got to choose your own fabrics. You don't have to do anything I've done. Um, but I wanted something yellowy because it's that time of year for me. I love yellows this time of year. Hello, Sabina. This is my first time with you. Looking forward to making this when I'm home after the new year. Oh, smashing. Debbie says she's been at work and home alone all Christmas. Oh, Debbie. Oh, sometimes home alone is actually quite nice. Um, <laughs> maybe not for you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's only another day sometimes. That's what we can say to make us feel better, can't we? So my background fabric, this ten and a half by ten and a half is this. You can see it's a it's a it's an off white with an off white sort of flecker of it. It's, it's like like a white on white, but it's definitely an off white. Now my backing fabric is this Stonehenge, and I thought now it was I think it was Bernadette that suggested that I use my backing fabric as a feature fabric on the quilt. So in other words, these pieces here, which don't have any applique on, she suggested that I use the backing fabric. And do you know what? I thought that was a brilliant idea because the backing fabric really blends in with my colours. So those are my two pieces. Obviously, I don't need that at all at the moment. And I've got my ten and a half by ten and a half inch square um, uh, cut, just to save a bit of time. And it's best to use a 12, 12 inch or twelve and a half inch ruler to cut that. It makes a really cracking job if you've got a ruler this sort of size. It, it really is a handy size ruler for this sort of thing. And I've put some tear away stabiliser on the back. Now, um, I do suggest you use stabiliser of some sort, even I'm going to be doing different sorts of stitches every time we do the applique. Tonight I'm going to keep it simple, but um, 
it would you know if we go on to things like buttonhole stitch or a fancy stitch on your machine you can choose one I mean there's gosh you'll have loads if you've got a fancy machine um, you could do satin stitch just a zigzag uh, free motion straight stitch you know the world's your oyster but I'm going to cover a few on the in the next 12 days and it's always good to have a stabilizer Tear away is brilliant because you can stitch and then literally you're tearing it away. But you could use um, a lightweight fabric behind this. So if you've got even a poly cotton, and the, the, the purists amongst us will go <gasps> poly cotton with a, um, a, a cotton quilt, but sometimes you just go with what you've got. Um, I would do the whole square because you're going to you might see through it with the tear away you throw you tear it and it's gone and you don't see it uh, we don't want to be using wadding because we're going to quilt it as a traditional quilt so we don't want to use wadding but um, maybe a soft cotton interfacing is good but it's nice to stabilize it because it will take your stitches better it will take your stitches better so that's my ten and a half inch square so that's good to go so this is my stem and leaf fabric and I'm doing them all the same with the same green I just thought it would be easier um, so it's a mottly sort of fabric which is nice it means that it's already got some interest so sometimes it's better than a plain but you you decide it's your it's your um, piece of work so let's put that to one side for the moment we will need it soon and these are my four colors now they're going to come across a little bit perhaps dull <laughs> on the live but in actual fact they are quite bright and they are quite yummy and they go quite well together so what I've done is all of my fabrics my green um, the, the three yellows I don't get that out of the way my three yellows are t a 10 inch square well actually no I think they're 12 and a half inch square just a minute yeah they're a 12 and a half inch square and because I've got the ruler um, and it's better than trying to work with a massive piece of fabric and you know it's all over the place and it's getting crumpled this is much more manageable if you're using a fat quarter it's a similar thing it's you cut it down to a decent sort of size and this is going to be all my flower centers so when we look at these designs let me just bring the one in that we're going to be doing <clears throat> so if we look at the the design it's that one there so that's going to be that one there okay and then I'm working with um, so I'm going to do that one and that one for my two blues which I'm using yellow and then obviously this is the green so and then when we work through the other designs um, this one has two different colors but you could do three different colors and with this one you've got one two three different shades um, it's nice to have the shades of the same colour, but you don't have to. You could use three colours that are really opposite to each other. There's, there's no rules here. So that's why I've got the three, because that's my maximum. So that would be for that flower there. So let's just pop that back. Um, but this is the one we're going to be concentrating on today. So I'm going to be using this fabric for the centre circles and this and this fabric for that and that okay those two shades of blue there um, oh Nicola says she's going to be using blues to match her sienna Nicola your sienna is magnificent so it'll look beautiful and it's just a nice little project now I'm putting that away because we're not going to be doing the tall flower for a couple of days so yeah Right, so the first thing we need to do is obviously cut some bond web or heat and bond, um, whatever you like, which is sometimes it is a bit of a personal preference. I actually prefer heat and bond to bond web. Um, it separates when you iron and you want to take the papers off. <laughs> They're much, much easier to take the papers off the pieces than bond web. 
And also, which I learned a couple of weeks ago from our Kath, that you can actually reheat the, bond, uh, the heat and bond and peel the pieces away again. So that's actually a really nice thing. And I didn't, I didn't know that. I think I kind of did in the back of my head because sometimes I would pick one to see if it had stuck and it hadn't. And I'd think, oh, it's got to be done again. But actually it was me. I need to let it cool and use it as a, a temporary adhesive, really. So these are my pieces. So we're going to just work in some sort of order. Now, the in the pattern, the flowery one, I wanted to be this light blue. And this sort of crissy-crossy one, I wanted to be on the outside. So I shall, I shall work in that order when we get to it. So with a plique, it's probably best. So you've got a sort of a placement guide here, so you know exactly where everything's going to go. And then you've got the pieces. Now I keep it all together, and that way um, it, it stays safe. I don't lose anything, and um, it's uh, you don't have to cut them out. You just you're just tracing. So just don't forget um, the tracing and cutting instructions are for one set of flowers. Okay. So if you need to cut more, then you're going to you need you need to trace at least you know twice more so for instance on here you might want to go ahead and trace all of the flowers for that particular design or just the one you know but as long as you know that this is just one set okay and that way we can uh, we it can work out for instance when we do when we do this one these two are the same so you would need to cut and trace, or trace and cut two, and then this is a different set, funnily enough, that's, that's a flipped design. So anyway, we'll get to it. When we get to it, you'll know. So um, if you've already downloaded before I flip these designs, then trace everything on the glue side of your heat and bond bond away, okay? I'll just keep saying heat and bond because that's what I'm using. And you'll be able to see the lines through the paper and it'll all be fine. If you have downloaded the new version, which is just this page, you just need to download the one page, print the one page, then these are all the right way around. Not that it makes any difference except for this bit. <laughs> That's the only bit really that it makes a difference, okay? So what we need to do is we start to start to trace. So obviously our mind is the right way around. And you can see through the paper really well. So just follow the outline. Now I wouldn't get too uptight whether you're following my lines or not. I know I won't. I shall just do my own thing. And uh, and I would you know really like it if you did the same. So there's one. Then we need the little round one here. So we'll keep within our design. So this is the small flower here. I'm hopeless with circles. And I always find just short little strokes with my pencil really helps. So there's one circle. This is the next circle. So this is the one that goes in the middle. Let me bring the design in and you can see. So this that little bit there. And then we've got two leaves. So it says here, trace and cut two. So we need to trace two, because look, on the flower, you've got two leaves. So we'll trace two. And, and the thing is, you'll get to the point where you, um, you know, you start putting your flower together and you think, oh, hold on a minute, I'm missing a leaf or I'm missing a, another flower or that sort of thing, yeah? So it'll all, it'll all start to become relatively clear. And the idea is that we just, you know, we just spend a bit of time together and, well, just enjoy a little bit of me time for an hour, basically. So let's just move that out of the way. And I'm going to trace the bigger one. So you don't need to cut these out at all. They can stay exactly as they are. And that way you've always got the pattern. So you could use these designs um, maybe on a cushion or something like that. That would be nice. So let's just see. You can see with curves, it's better to, to go sketchy. I mean, some people can draw curves. I envy them. 
<laughs> um, and just just follow the shapes and you can sort of tick them off if you want to then we need the big circle here so let's do that so for those of you that wanted to work with me hopefully you're you're, you're managing this okay um, and you're keeping up I'm not going super super speedy no intentions of doing that and then we've got the little circle there look so let's just draw that in so let's have a quick look at comments I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody or anything if anybody says hello and I ignore you apologize um, it's not intentional I just might have missed your comment Daryl says she's not sure what colour she'll make hers yet. Could be blue, could be yellow, depending on what fabric I have in my stash. Make her a really random one. That would be lovely. Yeah, make a really random one. Maybe all your fancy, pretty fabrics. So I'm just going to trace the stem. I just wanted, I was trying to be frugal with my heat and bond. First little point. So... <laughs> Yeah, so what did, what did Santa Claus bring you? What did Father Christmas bring you? Oh my gosh, anything, anything really your heart desired? Oh my gosh. I got a fountain pen from John. And it's absolutely beautiful. I've wanted one for ever such a long time. And yeah, so he got me a lovely fountain pen. It's got ink and everything. So I'm ready to go. So you can have a quick check and make sure you've got all the all the parts that you need. I'm, I think I'm fairly happy with that. So now it's a case of cutting out. So we're just going to roughly cut. And any of these pieces that you have um, left over, please save because there'll be other circles to cut and other petals that you can use, even pieces this small you could use um, on another project so or another flower. So keep, keep all the pieces. So we're just roughly cutting. You can see what that looks like. And so we'll cut, the, cut the flowers again, just chop around. You don't want to be cutting beautifully um, on your paper. It's such a waste of your time. And also you'd you'd have to cut it incredibly accurately accurately the next time. Now just in case we get lost, I'm going to do a little heap. So my big flower pieces, and you could mark the paper. You could you could do buffer big <laughs> or large. <laughs> Put that in the middle. So that's spare. Let's pop that to one side. Again, we've got the, the centre part. Let's just neaten it up. If you take as much paper off as you can, and that's too small to keep, um, it saves all that glue going on your fabric. And then it's wasted, isn't it, really? Because usually that's, they're too small. Even I don't uh, keep really small pieces like that. Yeah, I think there's a limit. So uh, does anybody... Uh, Nicholas said, I got two awesome presents, a rechargeable hot water bottle, I love it, and an electric guitar. Nicola, that's amazing. Vanessa said she had some vouchers to spend on your website, on my website. Oh my gosh, Vanessa, let me know when you want to get something and I'll give you a little something extra. Let me know, don't do it secretly. Let me know and we'll, we'll talk about you can have something extra as, as a little gift. From me to you. So there's my um, smaller flower. Yes, I've taken the, the vouchers off the website now because I find it's only Christmas time that people um, want the vouchers. Um, and the, although people can always ask for them. Yeah. So, and while you're there, have a look at uh, some of the, uh, the patterns and bits and bobs. That'd be lovely. So I'm going to keep these bits because they're, they're still quite big enough for other centre of flowers and leaves and things like that, pop them to one side. The, the other thing on, on, my, on my Facebook here is um, Abigail is doing an offer. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you, but Abigail's doing an offer for La La Land tickets. Um, I think it might be just today only. 
please don't get me into trouble <laughs> if it's not <laughs> but yeah she's doing half price for just six people only I think it's just for today for La La Land so if you want to come and you thought the you know budget was a bit sort of tight for you that's a, such a great opportunity to uh, to get some more affordable tickets and I think it's just for today please don't tell her I've told you <laughs> I might get into trouble. It might have been just for special people, you know, certain people. I'm not sure. But just don't tell her. Just say it was a random thing you happened to find out. She won't know. Right, so, <laughs> so with the paper side up and the wrong side of your fabric, we're just going to iron these down, okay? Um, and do, do make sure that you give the glue enough time to set. It doesn't have to be hugely long. Now, if it, while this is still hot, look, I can peel these back, and I don't know if you can see, but you can see the glue. So if you put these in the wrong place, you can lift them. And the same applies when we cut them out and we put them on our project. So good little tip from our lovely Kath. So here's our beautiful center fabric. Flip it over so we've got the wrong side. So we'll take one little circle and one larger circle and we'll pop those down. Again, paper side up, wrong side facing. If you're not sure and you think, oh, what did she say? What did she say? She said it too quick. I didn't hear her. Oh my God, the dog was barking and I never heard her. You can, of course, listen back to later tonight or tomorrow. No problem at all. Okay, so this is, so let's have a quick look at the pattern. Let's make sure what I said to you is right. Oh, Jan says she got the mem membership to the National Trust for me and him indoors. I can't wait to see some of the lovely places around the county. Oh, yes. Yes. You're welcome, Vanessa. Of course, you're very welcome. Right, so my light blue, I want it in my lovely little flowery fabric. So make sure your right side facing down. So I need that circle and that circle. Paper side up, wrong side up. You'll be sick of that mantra by the end of 12 days. <laughs> I can't believe, I cannot believe that Nicola has got a rechargeable hot water bottle. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. What, what strange presents have you had? I don't think I've had any this year. Um, I got fluffy socks from Abigail, but then she knows I like fluffy socks. Um, so that's, but that's not unusual, is it? I can't think I had anything unusual. So these are my two outside ones. So if we look at the pattern, it's this, the darker blue. Okay, so stick to your plan. And then with the green, which I forgot about, <laughs> so I was too busy looking at comments, being nosy. I'm going to try and be frugal a bit. But you can see, uh, this is only a 12 and a half inch square, and you can see you're really not going to use very much. So, um, if, like I say, a fat quarter is gonna be plenty. Um, be interesting to see how much we can get out of a 12 and a half inch square. Yeah, it'd be really nice to know. Okay, so let's turn the iron off just for a moment and then we're going to do cutting out so it's a little bit boring but if I can find my scissors here they are, we'll start cutting out so oh Daryl my unusual gift was a small dish for hedgehog food ready for the spring oh Daryl that's lovely oh my goodness so now I'm cutting on my line. Now, for goodness sake, don't worry how accurate A, your cutting is, and B, if your line was accurate. Just go for it. You're not going to be miles out. You'll be a millimetre out. So you mustn't worry about any of that. Uh, if you've got this far, well done. <laughs> well done, because, you know, this might be something new for you. Um, I don't want to sound patronising, but it's, it's good. It's an achievement. Is anybody cutting and tracing and along with me? Or are you, I, if, if anything, you're probably way ahead. 
because I'm doing this really slowly. So I'm just cutting on the line. Some of it's not. I want you to have a look. You know, I'm not that accurate. Doesn't matter. These are all hand drawn. So, um, you know, whatever you do makes them even more interesting. So let's uh, cut around the shapes here. And uh, the next job is to take the papers off, but with um, heat and bond it's dead easy. I'll show you. It's not, <coughs> excuse me, it's not so easy with uh, Bond or Web. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Oh, Diana says she's cutting. Well done, Diana. And um, I mean, I, I haven't made this. I haven't made this quilt up. I have no idea what it's going to look like. But like I said in my post earlier, I'm on a journey, a creative journey that I'm sharing with all you guys. I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it and it just take you out of, take us through Christmas into the new year and uh, it'll be a nice little Know, nice little get together. Yeah, so here's the big flower. So you can see how my scrappy my drawing is, but I'm just going to, you know, go for it. So don't forget this first section, I'll go over this again in a, in a sec. Oh, Alexa, stop. <laughs> um, I'll show you what the first section is. So rather than sort of just spend the first evening just cutting pieces, I thought, well, let's just do, well, it's almost like we're making a block, isn't it? Um, an applique block. So can you see also how I'm cutting this? My right hand and my elbow's on the desk and my right hand has not moved, not moved a muscle. If you look when I do this next one, this is how it's, it's the best way to cut anything that's curvy, okay? And left hand is just the same. Left hand is just the same. So you're, you're using your this hand to move the, the, the shape around and all you're doing is opening and closing your scissors. So we're closing now and then I open and I just close and I just use my left hand to guide my scissors and it's it's almost like you know when you do free motion your eye is following the line and your hands just do it I don't want you to think too hard about it and it's better than chopping into it it's, it's much better than you know, me, I don't know how I would do it because I'm so used to doing it that way, but, um, you know, moving it and trying, or, or this way. I tell you what's worse, having it so you're that way, right? Because that really, you can't control it very well. So you need it so all the bulk is on in your left hand and your, your left hand is doing all the work and it, it makes it incredibly easy to cut out, a, you know, twiddly little shape like that. Okay, last two little bits. So let's get, uh, so those are my circles, my second circle. Okay, so stabilize. I think about getting yourself some tear away, even if you're doing just, uh, you know, a satin stitch, it's good to have something on the back of your fabric uh, it stops your fabric from puckering. Um, it, you get a much nicer finish if you've got something behind your work. Um, if you haven't got any stabiliser of any description, then use a really lightweight fabric, like I'm thinking poly cotton. You might think, gosh, that's the last thing I'd use, but actually it's, um, it's really handy. Okay, so those are all my bits um, we've cut out, which is amazing. We've got 15 minutes, with plenty of time. So first of all, we're going to take the papers off of our pieces. So with um, Heat and Bond, you literally put your nail onto the paper and you, you scrape it like this, you just sort of bend it. And that separates 
the fabric from the paper very very easily so I'm going to place them and what I'm going to do is get my guide so we'll put that we'll put that where you can see it as well here we go and we need the bigger one here so again you just scrape it with your nail and it look just splits it it's lovely yeah you can't necessarily do that with um uh, bond web and then we want the bigger little circle <laughs> again you just scrape it and also the, the great thing about doing it that way is you're not for instance if some people will will scrape on the back of your bond web and that's perfectly acceptable but you've got to remember that don't scrape too hard because you could pull the fibers on your fabric by doing that okay so just just be aware of that okay so let's uh, place this one down see how we get on because I haven't put the, the um, stem down yet we need to do that so I'm just going to sort of put them like that see how we get on middle circle whoops that's the only thing it's a bit staticky doesn't it I hate that so what else has anybody else got? Marion says, I've got light interfacing. Can I use that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody's poorly here. Oh, bronchitis. Oh, that's not very nice. Ali says, she's going to pick some fabrics from her stash tomorrow and keeping my fingers crossed, I'll be well enough to sew. Oh, just do a little bit at a time. A little bit. Who said they were cheated? Oh, <laughs> Marge, I've cheated and used some flower dyes to cut the shapes to make some similar flowers. Hope you won't be banished. Of course you won't, Marge. Goodness gracious. You, of all people, do what you like. It's, we're, all we're doing is having some, some fun times together. I just need a reason, and the reason is the quilt. Wall hanging, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so there's my piece. Oh, that is different to that. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh, well, unless it's that way. Is it that way? I don't think it is. I think I think that's the wrong way around. I think it should be that way. I thought I did that on the pattern. Bear with, Paula. That's the same, isn't it? That's the same as the as this, and it needs to be reversed. <sighs> okay. I shall have to fix that guys but you need to do the opposite of that so let's just quickly do that that's a pain isn't it well that's good though that's good at least we found out I thought I flipped it perhaps I'd already flipped it and I didn't realize so what you can do is turn your page over see if I can see through it I should have brought my light box over or I wonder if I put that down. Yeah. Okay. Right. I shall amend that, guys. I thought I had. Obviously, I haven't. So apologies. I, do you know what? I double check that. Hmm. Okay. I'll shut up. <laughs> These things happen. There we go. So hopefully, when I flip it, that will be right. So sometimes these things are a bit of a brain teaser, aren't they? So let's just cut this out quick. Again, save all your little bits. Let me just make sure I haven't got that. Yeah, well, I think we're okay now. So you do what I do. If you already cut one out, flip it over like I did. And you'll be able to see through or get a light box underneath. Flip your page. But I'll flip it again tom tomorrow <laughs> and uh, we'll get it the right way around. So bother. These things happen. I never stress over stuff. Anyway, it's good it's good if you um, if we're not all perfect. <laughs> that's my that's my uh, excuse. Right, so I wanted to be a bit more frugal, so let's uh, pop that in there. Put that down. I just, do you know why I did not expect that? Right, shut up now. Shut up. <laughs> oh, what's that about H and B? What's this? Oh, heat and bond. 
I just ironed heat and bond onto the wrong side of the fabric, re-ironed and popped it back on the correct side and it's worked! Yay! Diana! See what I mean? See what I mean? It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, I do like it. And like I say, it's much, much easier to, um, to remove the papers. And they're not so staticky, you know, um, with a uh, bonder web. Yeah, the papers stick to your hands. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I love heat and bond, don't get me wrong. If anybody is watching from anything to do with heat and bond, no, 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 I love heat and bond. It's a much lighter weight fusible um, glue sheet and all the textile artists prefer uh, bonder web. Um, but sometimes, you know, you find things that really suit you and some, and my, I must admit, I've, I've pretty much always used heat and bond. And I remember going to, I did a workshop once with some ladies who were textile artists, so I had to mind my P's and Q's. There we are, that's better. And um, they were horrified when I gave them heat and bond. But we were working with tweed, layers and layers of tweed, and heat and bond was the only thing that would have, would have um, stuck these pieces of tweed down, all the different layers. Oh, which reminds me, when you come to sew these, uh, so let's have a quick look at the, the diagram. There we go. When you come to sew these, uh, especially the other flower with the four layers, don't forget you're going to be going through quite a few layers of fabric and glue. Um, it should be fine, but please, please, please put a new needle in your um, machine, okay? So we could put a leaf over the top. It's pretty much the same, isn't it? I think I'm happy with it going over the top. And we can put a little one on the other side. So it's just a rough guide as to where it will go. So it's about, about there, would you say? I think that's about right, isn't it? And then I think that one can go over a bit more. Let's try and get it the same as the picture. And that one goes something like that. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's okay. You might want to sort of shift over a little bit maybe. I mean the leaves are in the middle aren't they? Oh I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Now then, now it comes to the stitching, what have we got? We've got about five, well we've got, but let me, let's say ten minutes because I was five minutes late. So we'll stitch some of this down. Now oftentimes I will stick the layers and I'll work my way round. So for instance, you know, you can just have the, the stem, stitch the stems, sorry, start again, stick the stem down and then stitch it, and then stitch your leaves, especially if your leaf points are going over the top. If they're going underneath like that, okay, you might want to stitch that leaf first or stitch, uh, stick the whole lot of green down and do it in one hit. And if when you come to somewhere, for instance, when you're doing this leaf, you, you, and you think oh, I've got nowhere to go, you, if you're doing free motion you can just come back and make it as an, as an arc, okay? If you're doing things like blanket stitch, you know, you're starting there, you're coming up and you're coming back on yourself, okay? So you can stick those three down and stitch those three or you can just um, do the stem and then the leaves. So I would say that's up to you. I'm going to just stick those three down and then I'll stitch them in place as they are. And then what you can do, if you're not sure, you could take a picture of how that looks. And then we're gonna, cause we're going to take these uh, flowers away. Okay, so you might want to take a picture of that before you, and I'm gonna just shift this slightly over. So yeah, so you might want to take a picture of that before you, um, Take, take the flowers away, okay? So let's just put that back like that. So then it's just a light iron, just to bond that glue. And like I say, if you think, oh my goodness, I didn't want that leaf there while it's still warm, 
you can lift it up and reposition and you've still got the glue but ideally you won't need to and you can just leave it in place so make sure it's well stuck because one of the things about um, working with little pieces is that you don't want your machine foot to catch any of these edges so just you know make sure that it's bonded but you don't want to over stick or overheat because what will happen is your glue refuse will refuse to work it will just totally refuse to work and then you'll have pieces that are not glued down and if you're using old bonder web let me just put you on the side camera in a sec i'll just move you a little bit here for a moment if you're using old um, bonder web um, or heat and bond not so much but if you're using old bonder web it will the the fusible webbing will start coming away from the, the backing paper. It's still perfectly fine for fusing, but it, because it's old, it perhaps might not be so effective, and it's a darn nuisance if the, if the fusible web comes away from the paper. So, you know what, I'd say bin it. I know. I've tried all sorts of different things to bond that web back to the paper, and nothing really works. I think just, if it's old, just get rid of it. Get some nice new stuff. <laughs> Treat yourself, treat yourself. Get it on Amazon. I'm sure they'll probably have a sale. <laughs> right, okay, let's get you on the side camera. I can get my mouse to work. There we go. So, so sorry, you're gonna see all my gubbins there. Now I've got my regular foot on and you'll think, hold on a minute, I thought you did free motion. Hold on a minute, I can do a uh, regular stitch if I want to. And why wouldn't I? Look at that, dead easy. Doesn't need a jot of free motion on it. So I'm going to do the stem first and then I'll do the leaves. Now I've got a really good matching, matchy matchy thread. I'm not using black. I hate black on free motion. I think it's so ugly. So I would either match, if you're not very good with your stitching, match your thread to your fabric. If you're good with your stitching and you make a really good job of it, then use a darker thread to make it pop, but not black, a d darker green, but not too dark. <laughs> You'll be looking through your greens now thinking, oh my gosh, is that too dark? Is it too light? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> so let's just check my stitch length. Um, oh, I keep to your 2.4, 2.5. And we're just going to use our regular foot and follow the outline of your beautiful oblique. Now, you could, if you wanted to, go around this three times. You could just stick to your one, you know, one row around. Why not? It's yours, do what you like. As long as you have stitched it down, it can then go in the wash. Um, it should be fine. Uh, now that stitch length I think is a bit big for this because I'm going slightly over where I need to be so I might shorten that a bit um, so I can get closer to where I want to be. I think it's one of those trial and error things. So yeah, so you could go around three times. I'm going to go around once. Make sure your ends are all cut and neat. Do not back stitch. <laughs> Did I say that? Like school teacher, do not backstitch. I, was, I want to go back, but I'm not backstitching, I promise. Because I want to go up my first couple of stitches that I did, and that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so if I cut that, let me show you what I've done. Let me try and bring it right in. You can see what I've done. Okay, so I haven't used any free motion. I've just done regular stitching with my regular machine on my reg with my regular foot and even these leaves will be the same. Just take your time, move that fabric as you're stitching, go as far as you dare, try not to go off your piece of work, <laughs> all the way around again, keep that fabric moving and when you come back to where you started, just cut your threads. Okay, there we are, you can see, hopefully. And then we'll just do 
the last leaf now and all the way around and like I say you don't want to come off your fabric I nearly did so a smaller stitch is good in this instance let me just get rid of my end now we're not doing quilting we're doing a plique so you don't have to bury threads unless you really want to I just cut my threads it's absolutely fine to do that now look I've done those leaves don't they look glorious now what you could do hi Joe. What you could do is do some accent up here. Now that's really pushing the boundaries a bit for you guys, maybe. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. So I'm going to put, and I'm going to do a back stitch there, just so that leaves that. So look, leaves that. So can you see what I've done? Now, if you were using a darker thread, that would stand out more. But I think, you know, when you see it up close, you'd be able to see that centre stitch. And I've slightly curved it going around. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. And then we'll do the same for this one. So just curve it round, follow the shape of the leaf. Don't go all the way. I'm going to do one back stitch. That's all. I don't want anything to look heavy. And that has given me a little bit of interest in the centre of those leaves, okay? So, let's put the flowers on and then tomorrow night we will stitch the flowers. So, I think this is working out really well. Because you never really know how things are going to be. So let's pop you on the overhead. And as long as I can get things to work tomorrow, we'll be fine. And I will download this onto YouTube. So before we do anything, let's give it an iron keep it nice and nicely pressed I mean if I bring that up you have to excuse the front you can see how that looks so you get a real close-up view yeah that's a great view that is I'm just catching the light looks crazy from the front doesn't it I need a bigger ironing mat <laughs> let me get my bigger mat up so I'm going to stick the flowers on and then we'll stitch these tomorrow and then we will um, pop the two pieces together so if you remember I'm going to use my lovely lovely Stonehenge fabric Stonehenge fabric now can you see how that's going to work with my flowers in place I think that will really work well I'm, I'm, I'm I think it was I'm pretty sure it was Bernadette um, forgive me if it was anybody else it's not intentional so we can look at the pattern again and we can see, you know, you don't have to follow what I've done, but you can see how I've got it. So you can try and get it looking <clears throat> fairly similar. And this one is like that. So let me just point out that stalk, that stem is not going right up here. You don't really want any more bulk under there. You want to have these, this lovely stem sticking out. So look, look, it's literally a quarter inch in, if that. Half an inch max. And this one, well, it's only just, look, just only just in there, look. Okay, <clears throat> so let's pop those down. So you can see how easy this comes together. By the time we do this particular block again, we'll be pros. So if you do one layer at a time, it allows for the heat of the iron to melt the glue and adhere it to your layers. And can you see not one bit of puckering? And that's because we've used a stabiliser underneath. Do you think that's in the centre? It's not bad. It's not, not good enough for me, so I'm just going to peel it off, re-stick it. There we go, and that one's okay. So tomorrow night, so what we'll do is, well, well, I'll use my my bigger machine with fancy stitching, and we'll find a maybe a buttonhole stitch or something, and we will do some fancy stitching around there, not free motion. So I'll just hold that up to the camera so you can see. How it looks good well thank you very much <laughs> part one t
tick done. <laughs> so tomorrow night we'll stitch the flowers, we'll attach this piece. If I hold this up you might be able to see how it looks. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. That's Stonehenge fabric this one here. Cozy Cabin has it and they do um, send out but I don't think they're open this week. Have a look on their website. So I think that'll work. The other thing, of course, is that you can add your own stitching. You could add French knots and embroidery. You could do running stitches around the outside of the flowers. When we come to quilting, I'm going to starting to think about um, a, like a basket weave type crosshatch, but only on parts of the design. So that's what's in my head, whether that will work. Who knows? Anyway, thank you very, very much for your company. It's been an absolutely super evening. I'm sorry for the delay, um, first off. Um, Hopefully tomorrow there won't be a delay and I'll be on time and um, we will tackle that uh, those flowers and uh, with, a, with a fancy stitch. So get your machine out, have a look at your stitches and see what fancy stitch you um, fancy putting on your flowers. Think of, um, what's the one that I'm thinking, herringbone, something like that, feather, feather stitch. That's a nice one for going around a plique. So you could look at that, have a little practice as well. And don't forget to put something behind your work. OK, something behind your work. Good. Right. I shall see you at seven o'clock tomorrow night. And uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute treat. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.